Today on the Hobby Grotto, we're painting a Primaris Ultramarine retro style. We're starting here with a nice thin base coat of Kalidor Sky over all the armor, and I'm avoiding any details that aren't going to be blue, but you really don't have to be too neat here because the other areas are going to get base coats too, of course. I had a lot of debate on what blue to use for this, and I think Kalidor Sky is the most Ultramarines chapter in my mind, the way I picture the uh, vibrant 90s style. The Altdorf Guard Blue is maybe more accurate to the heavy metal style as well as what you currently see in 40k, but I'm going for more of an overall 90s energy here, mixed with my own style, rather than trying to you know, completely replicate the heavy metal style from the time. If you think 90s hammer at the end when you look at this, then my job is done. To get the colour nice and consistent, I'm doing multiple thin layers, probably two or three is good for this kind of base, because you really want those nice sections of uniform colour with marines. If you have an airbrush or spray can with the blue you want, you can also do that instead for this base coat, as the majority of marine models are predominantly one colour anyway, and then just come along after and repaint everything else black in preparation for the other colours. Speaking of repainting black, that's what I'm doing right now, just giving everything a, a tidy up so we don't have any blue showing through the other colours, and it's also going to set up our metallics nicely and assist with the black lining that we're going to be doing later. I'm adding in the yellow now with Avalon Sunset, and if I was painting larger areas of yellow, I'd probably hit it with a brown base first, but this paint has really good coverage and will be more than fine for these details. Yellow can be a bit of a funny paint, so you don't want to do excessive layers, but you still want to make sure it's looking bold and consistent with even coats. Now, it wouldn't be a classic 90s marine without red weapons, and Mephiston Red is perfect for this. Like all the other base coats, I'm giving it two or three thin layers to get it real solid. I want this mini to look almost toy-like, very bright and bold, so getting all these base coats looking good in the early stages is where the bulk of the work is, and that's why we want the paint nice and thin down here, because all these smooth surfaces are going to just become a mess with thick paint, and you don't want that. To keep with the classic look, I'm painting the pouches with XV88 to replicate a nice brown snake bite leather colour. Anything in that range would work here as a brown. You could maybe use something like Baylor Brown as well, or if you want a darker look, Rhinox Hide is going to be great for that. And we can't forget the Purity Seal, standard red of course. But these can also look good in different colours like blue or green, depending on the armour colour of the marine, and some bone on the parchment to finish it off that we'll highlight with some white later. There aren't too many metallic bits in this classic scheme, but these are all getting a coat of Ironbreaker because I want this silver to be quite bright. And interestingly enough, this is the first Primera Space Marine I've actually painted to completion, so it's quite fitting that I'm painting it in a classic scheme. I'm adding some Nuln Oil to all the metallic details, and I'm also adding some of this to the recesses of the Mini to create some shading. I want to keep this Mini looking nice and clean, so I'm not coating the whole model, just adding uh, it strategically to areas where I think it's needed. And now I'm coming back through and adding some black lining with Black Templar Contrast Paint. I think black lining was a real hallmark of the classic old school paint styles, and it really helps bump up the contrast between colours and helps the mini stand out even more on the tabletop. This contrast paint is perfect for this, just paint it in all the recesses. You can mix it too with a bit of medium to make it a bit more forgiving as it's a really bold pigment dense contrast paint straight out of the pot. But you know, just be careful, it's a really satisfying part of the process adding this black lining. And any parts that look a bit messy we can fix up with the base coats. So now I've finished all the black lining and tidied up the base coats, it's time to move on to the highlighting and you can see already how much work is done on marine models with just the base coats and shading. I've got a 50-50 mix here of Kalidor Sky and Kalgar Blue, um, which is going to be used for all the edge highlighting. Now the most important thing with marine models is to be neat. They're all clean lines and smooth surfaces, so you want your edge highlights to be thin and crisp. If you paint any of them on and they look too fat, just come back with some pure Kalidor Sky and thin them out. 
I often come back multiple times during this edge highlighting process and adjust the lines. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're um, keeping the paint nice and thin, it won't be noticeable when you're done. And of course, you don't need to highlight every edge, just the prominent ones, and then you can expand from there depending on you know how much time you want to spend on the model. I like to get the main ones done first because at a certain point with edge highlighting, I get bored of it and I have to move on. I'm also adding some smaller highlights with pure Calgar Blue to push the edges further. You can actually come back after this with some white mixed with Calgar Blue and do some extreme point highlights. And that can be good for character models to add a nice final touch, particularly to focal points. Time for everyone's favorite color to paint yellow. And firstly, I'm using Euro Yellow here as a broad highlight over everything to brighten it up. Nice and thin with yellow so you don't get any unwanted textures. Yellow paint suffers from similar issues to white paint, so you always have to be vigilant when using it. I wanted to deepen the shading here on the pauldron because it wasn't standing out enough, so I'm adding a thin line of watered down XV88 here. And then when it's dry, neatening the area back up with Eero Yellow. This is a great way to add some more depth to yellows if you feel like, you know, it's looking a bit flat. Just add a little bit of watered down brown into the cracks and it will really kind of add some nice depth. To finish off the yellow areas, I've got a 50-50 mix of yellow and white for some edge highlights. In the same way as the blue, you can push these highlights even further with pure white after this if you like, just on the extreme points. It's all about how far you want to go with highlighting, you know, it's if these are going to be models that are going to be, you know, battle ready or just to a tabletop standard, you don't really need to go this far with highlighting. Um, just a single bold highlight can often look good on table ready miniatures. But, you know, if you're painting something for display or you want to kind of push it a bit further, you know, go to town. Evil Sun Scarlet is a great liberal highlight for all the red areas. You can paint it all over and just leave the Mephiston red in the shading for a brighter red. Or you can focus more on edge highlighting with the Evil Sun Scarlet and keep more of that rich Mephiston red showing through. I'm kind of doing something in between those two options here. For some final highlights on the red, I've mixed some yellow in with the Scarlet. Um, but an orange paint in similar tone would suffice here, of course. If you're really careful, you can also add a bit of this to the eye lenses along the bottom edge to give them a bit more depth. I also added some Rune Fang Steel highlights to the metal at this stage, but this is purely optional. Now, I know not everyone is a fan of the classic Goblin Green bases, but for me, they're an important part of framing a retro miniature. When I'm painting something in this style, it just doesn't look right if it's not on a completely green base, you know, so of course it had to be done. There's nothing like a science fiction battle on a freshly trimmed and manicured lawn. This was such a fun miniature, honestly. The Primaris models are designed to be super nice to paint and I was definitely feeling that. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more chapters of Marines painted like this. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the Hobby Grotto.